I uh, went to um, the local library yesterday, which has a book sale, ongoing book sale thing, where you can fill fill a bag, which is like a grocery size bag, uh, fill a bag for a dollar, and whatever books used books that are in the book room. And except for these top two books, which I got at a thrift store, all the rest of these I filled the bag, so my total cost was only a buck, which is pretty amazing. Obviously, I can fill a lot of books. These are all paperback books, except for two hardcovers down the bottom there. So obviously, I can fill a lot of books in a bag. There's like 24 books here, or something like that, and most of them are romance novels. But uh, these other two books that I've got here, uh, I also got them yesterday, but I bought them at a Goodwill thrift store. And at that particular store, uh, paperback novels are a dollar twenty-nine, which is a little high. I mean, it's high for places around here because uh, the local Salvation Army has uh, paperback books for fifty cents each, and they used to be ten cents each there a couple of years ago, but they jump the price jumped. And then at the local Value World thrift stores in this area, um, generally paperback books are five. Well, they were five for a dollar, but now they're seventy-five cents each. For years, they were five for a dollar, but then just you know, in uh, a few months ago, they raised the price to seventy-five cents each. But anyways, the local Goodwill store had these two books. Uh, were among the ones that were a dollar twenty-nine each. So I was a little bit more picky, but I, I wanted to get a Tessa Dare and Kerrigan Byrne that they had because I'm currently working on a blog post where I'm reading uh, romance novels that were published during the past 100 years and so I have a you know several written uh, I have several um, I'm, I'm reviewing all the books in the blog post too so I have several read several books you know from going back to 1922 um, but I want to have some modern ones that a lot of people like as well and so Tessa Dare and Kerrigan Byrne have been recommended. And plus, these are historical romances, which I tend to favor. So, uh, they look kind of interesting. I'm looking forward to reading them. This one's 2015. Eve Ortega, which is Tessa Dare's real name, evidently. And the acknowledgments. And then there's this kind of funny banter at the very beginning of the book. Um... So it looks very promising. Sometimes you can kind of tell from the beginning of a book whether you're probably going to like it or not. At least I can. Or at least how much you will like it. You know, Sometimes you can tell, oh, this is just going to be a three-star book. Sometimes it'll be like right from the beginning, this is a five-star book. The Hunter by Kerrigan Byrne. Now apparently this was her second novel. The first being The Highwaymen. And it's from St. Martin's Books. So this is also by Kerrigan Byrne, The Highwayman, 2016. And then her next book, which is excerpted at the end of this one, is called was called The Highlander. That would have been her third book. And again, it starts off with acknowledgments. And then it has like this torture scene. Christopher Argent is the hero's name, who is an assassin. So it looks very adventure uh, adventurous and you know um a very uh uh exciting adventure type story at least from that very beginning we'll see but uh, so far it looks promising and then i got these two books which obviously are not romance this was a uh all the rest of these were from that fill a bag for a dollar this is a british uh, mystery series and purser from berkeley prime crime from 2002. And then we have a uh, Star Trek Next Generation uh, novel uh, written by Peter David, who's a famous comics writer. I think this is published by Pocket Books. And this is like from 1991, back when uh, Peter David was writing The Hulk for Marvel. And he has a introduction there. And then the, it has this funny opening line. Jean-Luc Picard leaned against a wall and ran his fingers through his mop of thick brown hair. So you know that this begins uh, 
when he was a younger man, obviously. And we have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy, um, which I wasn't sure if I had this already, um, but I looked on my shelf and I have like four other Harding books, like The Mayor of Casterbridge and Tess of the D'Urbervilles, but I didn't have this one, um, as it turns out. So this is like an edition from 2001. Romance Classics, it says. So maybe that was part of a series. Hmm. And this, when I pulled this book out, uh, Irish Romance, the mammoth book of Irish romance. At first I was like, well, is it really romance? Or is it they're just using the word romance as sort of some other, you know... Uh, not really romance genre, but it turns out it evidently is romance genre short stories. This is from 2010. And the only writer that I really recognized for sure was Robert Gellis, who has written books since the historical novel type of stuff since 1965. And the cool thing was all the stories in this book are original to this publication. First publication originally, so they weren't published elsewhere and then reprinted here. They're all brand new stories. So uh, that was pretty cool. And then we have two 1980s Victoria Holt hardcover books. And she is known as a kind of a gothic type writer. Her uh, first book was Mistress of Mellon in 1960. Um, also wrote under the names uh, Philippa Carr and Jean Plady. And the funny thing is her writing styles kind of like um, there's some for other books. Reminds me of Daphne du Maurier's uh, Rebecca which starts out, I dream, last night I dreamed I went to Mandalay again. So hers also has this kind of first person I had always been fascinated by the big house of Framling. Perhaps it had begun when I was two years old and Fabian Framling had kidnapped me and kept me there for two weeks. Well, maybe so. <laughs> it was full of shadows and mystery. There's the back cover. And yeah, this one, The Silk Vendetta. And again, it'll be like a first person. This one's from 1987. So she died, I think, around 1990, maybe 89, something like that. As I grew out of childhood, it began to dawn on me that there was something rather mysterious about my presence in the Silk House. I did not quite belong, and yet I felt a passionate attachment to the place. To me, it was a source of wonder. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, then we have two category romances here. Nora Roberts' Cordin Cordina's Crown Jewel, which takes place... Uh, it's a royal family uh, series, uh, Cordina's Royal Family. So this is, I guess, like the fourth book in the series, Silhouette Special Edition, which is now Harlequin Special Edition. This is from 2002. So as you can see, Nora Roberts was still doing um, category romances at that time. It says here, in addition to her amazing success in mainstream, Nora remains committed to writing for her category romance audience, which took her to their hearts in 1981 with her very first book, A Silhouette Romance Title, which was Irish Thoroughbred. Name of it. And in the middle here, there's an interesting, uh, has a little bookmark thing that you could, you know, take off if you wanted. It has a picture of Nora Roberts there. It's kind of cool. And a list of uh, that one's coming titles. Or actually, these are just Nora Roberts uh, titles coming up. So, uh, and then Leigh Roberts, another Roberts. I don't know anything about this one. This is a Harlequin super romance, book 543 from 1993. And so that's that. And we have a Victoria Alexander. This is a historical, The Princess and the Pea which is published by Leisure Books. And it turns out that this book was originally published in 1996. But this edition from Leisure Books was published in 2002. 
2009. So it's sort of like fairy tale romance. Now, as it happens, there was a series of Dorchester was doing a series of fairy tale romances in the late 90s. This one is Jackie and the Giant by Linda Jones. Part of their uh, Love Spell line. And do fi fo fum. Jackie and the Giant. 1999. So they would do like sort of re uh, recast uh, old fairy tales as romances. Here's two um, historicals: the knight, which is a medieval type uh, romance. In case you can't tell, this is published by Jove. Let's see what year. Two thousand one. It says. And this was a Time Swept by Julie Moffat, a double-edged blade. Time Swept were time travel, also by Love Spell, time travel romances, which were popular and still are, actually, but back then they had their own line, the Time, time Swept line. This is, was 1996. And finally, for these historicals, we have Catherine Coulter's Fire Song, which was part of a series. This one that says first came out in 1985. Second novel in the Medieval Song Quartet. There was Warrior Song and then Earth Song and Secret Song. This is a, published by Signet Books. And this edition is 2002, it looks like. There's a flavor of the first page. And finally, we have these more Americana-type uh, books. Linda Lell Miller. Uh, a couple of months ago, I read her uh, recent uh, book, The Yankee Widow, and I loved it. It was great, a great book. But uh, I haven't read any of her contemporaries. That was a historical. First, an exciting McKentrick Men series. This is a Harlequin book from 2007. Lindsay McKenna, who's also known as Eileen Noman, Newman, I think her name is. Zebra Books. And 2019. There's a, that was a more recent book. And she has like a lot of, she has a military background, so a lot of her stuff is more very masculine oriented. Now these are two books by Joan Johnston. And The Men of Bitter Creek, which actually is like two short pieces. You know, the two uh, The Man from Wolf Creek and The Christmas Baby. It's from the uh, 1990s stories. And this edition is from 2004. And another Joan Johnston. Who I think started writing in the 1980s for the tapestry line from Pocket Books, I believe. And finally, we have some Amish romances here, which I've never actually read yet, but I figured I ought to do that in the sake of completeness as part of my reading romance novels from the past 100 years. This one has a really nice cover. I like how simple and clear it is. The Way Home, it has the title. No extra writing or anything like that, and then it's you know what you're getting. It's a Amish romance. Let's see, I think this is from 2019. Yep. Let's just get a flavor of the first page there. And two books by Charlotte Hubbard. These are both by Zebra Books. This one's his first in a new series. And these are both Amish romances. This one's from 2017, and I think the other one is similar. Let's see here. 2016, yep. And we just got three more books here. The Quilting Circle, Amy Lillard. Another Amish romance from Zebra Books. 
2017. Looks like three different stories. And then two, finally two books here that look sort of a contemporary, heartwarming type contemporary romance. A zebra shout fresh new romance, which I'm not sure what that means. But part must be part of a line that they were doing. This is from 2018. There's just a flavor of the first page. The back cover. And finally, this is actually two books. There's that's why it's so thick. It's like 700 pages. By Hope Ramsey, Summer on Moonlit Moonlight Bay, which again is part of a line, plus a bonus novel by Miranda Lison. So, the first book Oh, this is uh, published in 2019, this edition. And we have an acknowledgement section. And then later in here, you get... So that's somewhere on Moonlight Bay. Whoa. And then it says, did you miss the first Moonlight Bay? And then there's... Whoa. Well, I guess please turn the page to read an excerpt from The Cottage on Rogue's Lane. So there's an excerpt from that book, and then about the author of that book. And now you get your second novel. So you can see it's, it's like getting two books for the price of one. Then There Was You by Miranda Lyason. And then you got that book. So like I said, it comes to, and there's the first uh, book of the book. Not sure the the sense of having two novels by different authors in one book, but like I said, seven hundred some pages for seven ninety nine. But you know, if you bought that at the store, they'd probably have the discount, you know, ten percent off or whatever. So it's a good buy for the price. But anyways, so that was my recent haul, and like I said, I got most of them for a dollar each. All but those uh, those two books, the Tessa Dare and Kerrigan Burn, which I got for a dollar twenty nine each. Quite a haul. So thanks for watching.